Hello YouTube friends, this is Jim from Texas and I'm responding to an overwhelming avalanche of email, well one anyway, wanting to know, hey Jim, it's been forever since we've seen you riding your motorcycle, what's up, you giving up riding? Well, no, I haven't given up riding, I did have a break from it. Uh, for a reason we won't go into now, and I'll have another break next month because I'm going to have my leg chopped off. Well, not exactly chopped off, just the knee. So, <laughs> I'm going to have a new knee next month. So, I've got a little window here where I can ride some. And I have written, been riding some in the, uh, recently. However, you haven't seen it on YouTube because somewhere in all the excitement I had last April, the microphone for my drift camera uh, got lost. And... The problem with that is, is first of all, let me uh, let me take a drift camera up here so I can use it as a visual aid. It's right over here. Okay, I'll edit that out a little bit. All right, well, here's my drift camera. The microphone goes into the back of this here with a 2.5 millimeter plug. The problem is the microphone cord they saw you for $20 is I believe a meter long. It's it's very long for our purposes. I'm looking back here. Yeah, it's the same length as this. This is the record indicator LED that also plugs into the back of the Drift HD camera. Now with the Ghost camera, they've really improved this by making all of this wireless. At least not the mic, but at least the the record indicator is now wireless. But in this one, it plugs in the back. However, the record indicator you could conceivably have it by your head and have this out here, you know, on your tank bag or somewhere in front of you, so you could still see it. Uh, not being able to tell where you're in recording mode is almost a fatal flaw in my estimation. So this is worth the trouble. I had it up in my helmet just because I had this big hairball of wire from the mic cord too. So this is the same kind of cord as the Drift HD mic cord. And it's just too long for a helmet. And I just couldn't bring myself to send them $20 plus postage. Nothing against Drift. Uh, the, particularly the people at POV360 where I bought my Drift camera have been super. They always throw an extra part or two in there if you ask them nice. Uh, when you order something, they're really good people. But I just couldn't bring myself to spend twenty dollars. I may still have to do it, but I'm going to try and experiment. What I'm going to try and do is make my own mic cable, my own microphone cable that's just long enough to fit on my helmet, uh, and see if I can get it to work with this camera. So we're going to try that now. Um, you're going to. Well, I've already kind of started making it, and it occurred to me other people might be interested. So let's let me show you where I am with the homemade microphone. Uh, assembly that I'm working on and, and then you can follow me through while I, I see if I can actually get it to work. And what I did, uh, what I did is I went to Radio Shack and I bought two things. The first thing I bought was this object here. This is a 2.5 millimeter phone jack. Uh, male, sometimes it's called a TRS, a tip ring signal jack. It's uh, the, the mini kind or the micro kind, I don't know which, they are three sizes, the 2.5 millimeter, the three millimeter, which is what the newer cameras, including the new Ghost use, the, and the uh, quarter inch phone jack like a traditional electric guitar would use, for example. So this is the miniature, the mini one. So what I've done is uh, I took my pan of ice. You need something to hold this stuff. And, you, and I just put it very gently in the pan of ice. You need something to hold this. And I soldered the, I took uh, some ribbon cable I had lying around and I, uh, I took some ribbon cable I had lying around and uh, cut a length of it off. I soldered a red lead to the tip, the very tip connector, the one on the end, and the brown lead to the ground or the outside uh, uh, shield part of the jack. There's actually three connectors on here, but the drift only really uses the tip and the ground. And then this is the uh, the little cover. Now, I've already done the soldering. So that's the hardest thing to do is to solder that on there. So now that I have my uh, uh, now that I have my uh, my uh, soldering done there on this thing. I want to give it a little more structural integrity. One thing I've already done is I drop the little Cyrano acrylic glue or super glue. The, I go to the hobby store that sells RC radio control stuff and get the thick slow drying super glue and put, drop the drop of that in here to give it a little more 
structural integrity. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some shrink wrap tubing. Let's see if I can get it on here, hopefully I'll still be able to put the cap on it. So let me try to put the shrink wrap tubing on. I'll just to come back in a minute and show you how that's done. Okay, this here is what you call shrink wrap tubing. You can buy a pretty cheap. I bought a little kit full of small pieces like this at Fry's for about $8 for a whole bunch of it. The last kit I bought lasted like 20 years and I just used the last of it up. It's not expensive. So what I've done is I've taken my microphone cable here and I've cut a little piece of it off and I'm going to slide it right over the soldering. The problem you're going to have with, I may have with this is probably not so much electrical as it is mechanical because this is going to ride on a motorcycle. If we were drift, we would have a factory in Taiwan uh, make these up and it would all be you know kind of pressed and melted assembled and it would just be one monolithic piece and it would never give you a problem of course I'm not now if Drift was paying attention they would ask themselves hey lots of people wear this camera on their helmet we sell a helmet mounting kit so uh, maybe some of them don't want to have a whole meter of thick cable just to run their microphone uh, so uh, they might if they were Drift was really thinking they would put me out of business here and make a cable that's six or eight inches long so if people who wear use their helmet mounting kit would then be able to not have to put up with a giant hairball of wire uh, if drift was thinking which you're not drift as far as this goes but you're not innocent I think all these companies the people in Taiwan just go out somewhere and they say I need a lavalier mic and somebody says here I've got a million of them for 0.05 cents a piece okay we'll sell those for twenty dollars boom case closed Drift, you're missing a bet. Well, I'm going to put you out of business if you don't do this yourself. So anyway, this what happens when I apply heat to this, the tube, the black tube will shrink and tighten up on the uh, on the on the connector here. So let me put it in this little place with the pan of ice. You use a heat gun. That's what this is. It's just a powerful hair dryer. I've had this one for uh, 30 years. Still works, I hope. I haven't used it in a little while, but yep, I think it's going to work. So I'll put some heat on this and it'll shrink this tube. And a lot of you are saying, well, duh, we know it's, but somebody might watch and may not be familiar with heat shrink, heat wrapping and making connectors and stuff. So you probably can't see it in the movie, but that tube is now kind of shrinking around the connector. It'll give it a little bit more structural integrity. with this end part to shrink okay that's all it takes now let me get some more light on here that probably help you guys out okay there now there's more light on here maybe you can see a little better this uh, the, the uh, shrink wrap hopefully will give it a little bit more structural integrity this is the cap that comes with the Radio Shack connector I'm going to put it on here next and see if it'll work here comes the cap onto the connector and I hope that it can still go on there with the shrink wrap if not yes good oh Jim you're a genius let me tighten this up just a little more so now I've taken a little bit larger piece of heat shrink wrap cable of shrink wrap tubing and it'll slide right over the end of that connector and so there you go I've slide this larger piece of shrink wrap over the end of the connector you can see this is a about two inches long get out the old heat gun and heat away I won't bore you with the heating process you get the idea you just run back and forth with your heat try to get it evenly distributed until you shrink it to the desired level now I've done the heat shrink and you can see that it's shrunk nicely over the the plastic uh, cover giving me a little bit more structural integrity. The next thing I'm going to do just out of an abundance of caution is going to use this wonderful stuff and if you don't have this you should. This is called Gorilla Tape. It's a made in America product. It's inexpensive. You can buy it at Walmart. This is like the Superman of duct tape. It's real strong tape. It's real well made. It's real easy to work with. 
uh, you really need to have this uh, if you're going to do anything like this. What I'm going to do is put a piece of Gorilla Tape around this to give it even more uh, to reduce the flexing in here because flexing is the enemy of a connector like this. All right. Uh, it's a little redneck looking, but you can see I've put a little bit of this uh, Gorilla Tape on there uh, just to give it a little more structural integrity. So what, now what we have is uh, so two thin wires connected into a, uh, uh, a microphone or TR, uh, tip ring signal jack, uh, TRS jack, uh, the 2.5 millimeter kind. So what goes on the business end? Obviously a microphone. Now this is where you want to be careful to get the right thing. This is my microphone element. This is Radio Shack part number 2700092. It comes in an envelope that looks like this. It's in that, if you're in an American Radio Shack, it's in those drawers with all the little bits and pieces in it, and it'll be in a random place, and it may take you a long time to find it. You can go to their webpage and either order it or verify that it's in the store. Once you know it's in the store, you don't know, they don't have a drawer labeled microphone elements, so you have to look around. And it took me a few minutes, I think it was with the LEDs, because it kind of looks like one. In any case, here's the deal. They have two microphone elements at Radio Shack. Uh, you want number 0270092. 270090 is the wrong kind. This is called an electric micro, uh, microphone. And the thing that's special about this and why the head is a little bit large is because it's got a permanent magnet connected to the microphone diaphragm so that when when you talk and it vibrates the element in there the permanent magnet actually generates a current so you really only have two wires coming out of it a lot of microphones such as the powered mic that I'm wearing right now have to have a battery I'm using a, uh, a powered lavalier mic to make this uh, video and it has a little battery in this little battery pack and the reason for that is they use a different kind of mic uh, a condenser mic that requires an external biasing voltage to work. This is, I'm pretty sure, what will work and it's a lot simpler to wire up. Uh, and you, don't, you just don't have to worry with a third power supply if you get the electric. It's labeled on the label condenser mic and it is a condenser mic but it's a different kind. It's electric and they say it correctly on their web page. So even though on the envelope they both say condenser mic element the slightly more expensive one, this is about, it eats up about four dollars, three or four dollars, I forget the exact price. 2700092 is the one you want to make this work, I hope. So what I need to do is I need to attach it to these wires. Now, what I'm going to do now is fit, trim this long wire because I don't need to make a, this one is almost as long as the original drift right now, so I'm going to fit it to the helmet. So let me turn the camera off, let me fit it to the helmet, I'll show you what I'm going to do there. Okay, this is my uh, Scorpion helmet. You notice I haven't put the camera mount on there too, I'm going to have to do that too, and I'll talk a little about that maybe. But basically the camera is going to be somewhere in this area here. So the mic, I'm going to tuck, it, the wire needs to go, the plug will be approximately there. So I'll run the wire up through here and I'll probably tuck it down in this cheek pad here. So I don't want to cut it too short, that would be awful. Alright, I'll use this file as a pointer. What I've done here is I've taken two of my uh, thinnest possible uh, shrink wrap tubes, slid them down away from where I'm going to do solder the connections together. Then I've wrapped the leads coming out of the microphone element with the, my cable. Try to make it as tight as I can but still slim enough to where uh, the shrink wrap will f f slip over it. So now all I've got to do is put some solder on these two joints. and. That'll be the next step here. You want to use uh, thin, as you can get, electronic solder for this. You want to have cleaned your soldering tip off. P 
people use a sponge. There's lots of videos on YouTube how to solder, and I'm not even very good at it, but so I'm probably doing it not quite right, but hopefully this will work. So let me. Hopefully that's the last magic blue smoke that we're gonna see today. Okay, I don't quite like the looks of that. It's kind of blobby looking. All right, I've completed soldering. Okay, I've completed soldering the, uh, splicing the uh, cable that I made to the microphone element. I'm going to slide these two uh, shrink wrap tubes on here to give it a little bit more structural integrity. Here's the finished product. You can see I've got uh, shrink wrap and a little backed up with Gorilla Tape on the microphone element end of it. And then I have the plug, plastic cover, and uh, uh, a little bit of Gorilla Tape to make give it some structural integrity. And then this is about two feet long, I guess. Okay, I've uh, finished shrink wrapping and taping up the mic element. You know, we've already done the plug part of it. I've checked it with the voltmeter to make sure there's no shorts. So the only thing left to do is to smoke test it. Hopefully no magic smoke will come out of the, the drift camera here. So I'm going to plug the mic into the mic jack of the drift camera. I'm going to turn the camera on. And as soon as it's ready, it's doing its boot up thing. Okay, we're going to start it up. This is Jim in Texas trying out my new microphone for my Drift HD camera. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, does this mic work? If not, I'm going to be very embarrassed. All right, stop the camera. I'll hold this close to where my, my lavalier mic is so you can hear it if it works. How about that? It works! It works! Hallelujah! It works! Yay me! Now, I've got to write it. Unfortunately, I've got an error and i got to go promise my wife to go grocery shopping and bring her dinner. She's working late. So it'll be late tonight, but we'll have a night ride hopefully tonight and we'll try this out in anger. Or not in anger, but in the wind, in the helmet. Still got to mount the camera on the helmet.